Forget the Sam Ellinger, we're back jokes at Texas. The Longhorns are officially back as the college football playoff berth that they secured a year ago really has momentum for that program. Steve Sarkeesian, the administration, the boosters have all established that Texas is going to be a year-in, year-out playoff contender, especially with the advancing to the 12-team playoff and the move to the SEC. Hello, everyone. I'm Blaine Gilmer. Welcome into SEC Unfiltered, the best SEC entity on the internet. And today we're talking about the Texas Longhorns as we go throughout their schedule, do a deep dive into it. We know about the personnel. We know that they're bringing back Quinn Ewers. They have good depth there, of course, with Arch Manning that that could be ready, you know, one play away. And that's a great backup to have. Got talented running backs, basically all of your offensive line coming back. You've brought in Golden and Bolden and Bond as as transfer wide receivers that are going to be a dynamic duo returning Jonte Cook, bringing in Amari Nyblack to be there with Gunnar Helmet tied in. All of these great things that are going on offensively. Uh, do have some questions maybe on the defensive front with Bo Davis being gone, Devondre Sweat, uh, Byron Murphy, those guys that are out of the program. Got to got to find some guys to step up there. But Texas does a great job with recruiting, both high school-wise and also bringing guys in via the portal, as we just mentioned. So I don't think you have to worry about personnel-wise at all. It's just about who you play, when you play them, where you play them, and also the level of execution and Some of those things, you know, they stack up on you, especially when you get to a brutal schedule like they're going to have in the SEC now. So when it comes down to it, guys, we are going to be breaking this down. And without further ado, let's hop right into it. Game one is really more like a glorified scrimmage. This is a steaming pile of garbage that you're going to play week one in Austin, Texas, in the Colorado State. Rams. I'm just telling you, uh, man. The the most relevant they've been is that game against Deion Sanders and and the Colorado Buffaloes. And guess what? Colorado's terrible as well. People give them a lot of credit for some reason. I don't know why, but Colorado's awful as well. So uh, you won't have to worry about the Colorado State Rams here. I think uh, the difficulty rating on this one, the SEC unfiltered difficulty rating on this one, is about a. 2.5. No worries for Texas. They'll blow the doors off Colorado State. Now, this one's in, interesting. If this was a year ago, I would say heavy, heavy favorite for Michigan it, having the game at Michigan, the physicality of that offensive line, uh, the the dynamic duo of Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum, J.J. McCarthy at quarterback, uh, Jim Harbaugh at head coach. Well, guess what? All of that is gone. Yeah, the defending national champions uh they have lost a ton of talent from that team. Uh, Sharon Moore is there. They will have that that identity, that toughness. They do have Donovan Edwards coming back at running back. They've lost a lot up front. They've lost a lot on defense. The only thing that I think Michigan could test Texas with is if they're able to just say, hey, we're going to run the football. And this this improving defensive line that Texas has that really won't been tested game one against Colorado State can Michigan just run the football that that's Michigan's you know secret there to try to beat Texas and that would be Texas worry if they could just average you know four four and a half yards a clip and just kind of beat them death by a thousand cuts also Alex Orgy at quarterback. Think of an Anthony Richardson, not the most polished passer, but he can really run, uh, very dynamic. Also, if it's not Alex Orgy, it could be Jaden Davis, a freshman. So I don't know that he'll be ready for the moment either. So Texas should be able to frustrate their quarterback play. However, the Michigan run game is something that we're going to have to look at in this one. Uh, Being on the road, defending national champions, even with the loss of talent, things like that, and and loss of their head coach and Sharon Moore, uh, loss of their head coach and Jim Harbaugh to Sharon Moore, rather. I think that you're going to see an SEC unfiltered difficulty rating of a seven on the road here. Um, just because, listen, it's it it's never easy to go on the road for really good programs uh, and take things. And listen, it'll probably be that big noon kickoff crap. Okay, and that's that's a detriment to. 
um, to Texas having to go and get up that early and do all that kind of stuff. I think it'd be much better if this was like a night game, uh, but that's just the way we are with TV contracts and Fox and the Big Ten and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, difficulty of about a seven on week two there. UTSA, you get to come home in week three. UTSA is not the same UTSA that were a couple of years ago. I give this a difficulty rating of about a three. Um, I just don't think I just don't think you'll see much of a test out of the Roadrunners on September 14th at home in Austin, Texas. Same thing out of ULM. And it's like a difficulty of like 1.5. Okay. It's just not uh these, these are just money games for these small programs. Um Texas being the benevolent benefactor and and funding uh, the 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 non revenue sports of UTSA and ULM over a couple of weeks, so charitable giving there by Texas and a, just a small small difficulty rating there, nothing nothing major. Mississippi State at home, Jeff Levy will bring probably the most dynamic offense in terms of scheme that Texas will have seen to this point. Um, Jeff Lebby, of course, uh, having been at Oklahoma, he's familiar with Texas, uh, has that has that knowledge of how Texas is going to play against his offense. So, you know, you can't just sleepwalk in it. Uh, but but the level of talent that separates Texas and Mississippi State at this point in time is just uh, just overwhelming. And I, I give this a difficulty rating of about four because it is. It's a home game for Texas. Yes, the scheme of Jeff Levy may cause some problems early. Remember, last year, Texas' secondary was its vulnerable spot. Uh, it should be more of a strength this year. You bring in Andrew Makuba and, and, and people like that on the back end to help out. Uh, got got you know some, some pieces returning that should improve. I just don't think you, you see Mississippi State give Texas much of a challenge here. Then you get a bye week before you go to the Red River shootout uh, over there, the Red River rivalry against Oklahoma in Dallas, October 12th. This is the start of a key, just mini two-game stretch here because you have to pour out so much emotion in this rivalry, especially with Oklahoma having beaten Texas last year, even despite Texas's appearance in the college football playoff this is a kind of a black eye on the season losing to oklahoma right it always is it doesn't matter what your record is you don't want to lose to your most bitter rival and and now both being in the sec uh you know the, the old saying it just means more well that's only going to kick up this rivalry another notch and i'm excited to see these two play in dallas you've got a guy in Jackson Arnold at, as Oklahoma's quarterback who's a state of Texas guy, so you know it'll mean a lot to him coming back and, and, and playing that game at the Texas State Fair. So I think it's going to be interesting to see these two teams lock up. Uh, I like the chess match between Venables and between Sarkeesian. So, hey, listen, it's going to be a physical game. Uh, they got uh, Danny Stutzman coming back. Uh, they got Billy Bowman coming back in the secondary. Um, got some guys coming back along the front. I think it's going to be interesting to see. I think Texas will be able to run the football a little bit better against Oklahoma. And the the, the problem for Oklahoma is can they develop enough depth on the offensive line and improve at the offensive line? Um, but, hey, as we said, the kind of the weakness, if there is a weakness for Texas, will be that defensive front. So it'll kind of be the the two areas that are – uh, having to grow the most for these two teams going through it. It's going to be interesting. I, I Just because it's a rivalry game, I give it a, a difficulty of, a, of an eight. I mean, it's just a tough game. that you, It's hard to win regardless of what the records are. Texas is the more talented team, but they were the more talented team last year as well. So we'll see what happens. And the reason this is so really significant is because no matter what happens in this rivalry, you have to turn around the next week and host – Maybe the best team in the entire country in the Georgia Bulldogs with Carson Beck coming in there uh, with a, a experienced defense coming in there, having guys like Malachi Starks in the in the secondary to, to lead that team, a future first-round pick. I mean, these guys are loaded from top to bottom, and, and having to – it's great that Texas 
gets to have this game at home. It, it's it's going to be an unbelievable atmosphere in Austin, Texas that entire week, not just because of Georgia coming in, but there's a Formula One race in Austin that weekend, and it's just going to be just a unbelievable environment inside the, the city of Austin, Texas. But when it comes down to it, this is going to be a just brutal, brutal matchup, especially following the heels of the matchup against Oklahoma. Uh, and when it comes down to it, you know, what is just what does it look like injury wise, health wise, all that kind of stuff can play a factor uh, into this matchup. So I think that is uh, not ideal in terms of the timing. I would give it a difficulty rating of a, of a nine. The only way it would be harder is if, if you had to go and play at Georgia at Sanford Stadium. So can Texas win? Will Texas be favored? I think Texas will probably be favored in this one, particularly if they're able to take care of business against OU and be undefeated at this point. I would say Texas would be the favorite at home, but it's going to be a tough matchup regardless um, with all the talent that Georgia brings in and all the experience, particularly with Carson Beck coming in at quarterback, a guy that I think will be maybe the best quarterback in the country uh, this year with based on what he did did last year uh, on that with that uh, offense in his first year as a starter. Now you got week eight, you get to go to Vanderbilt, basically a little vacation weekend trip for Texas fans. Vanderbilt is absolutely awful. They're worse than Colorado state. Uh, this, they shouldn't even be in the sec. They just still in money at this point, but Hey, it is what it is. Go to, go to Nashville, enjoy yourself, have a good time. This is a difficulty rating of about a three. No, no big deal. They lost a ton of players in the portal, um, and they're not able to bring a ton in because of academic standards and lack of support from administration and all that kind of stuff. So, Texas fans, enjoy your trip to Nashville because it ought to be a, ought to be a fun one. Week nine, uh, your game nine after a bye week, so you get Vanderbilt and then a bye week, and then you play the Florida Gators. This is not your your dad or uncle's Florida Gators. Okay, this is also a terrible terrible football team and a program going in the wrong direction. Billy Napier, uh, who knows if he'll even still be the head coach at this point in the season. So I think, uh, you know, Texas, other than other than so far, the Oklahoma and Georgia back-to-back, it's been a very, very manageable, very favorable schedule will continue to be so as they get the Gators at home here on November 9th. Game 10 away at Arkansas. Tricky. This is a tricky game, trap game, if you will. I, I think, uh, obviously, Texas, as we can say, against everybody except Georgia, will be more talented, okay? They'll be more talented than Arkansas. Um, Bobby Petrino, offensive coordinator, what does Arkansas even look like at this point in the year? Is Taylor Green, the guy who transferred in from Boise State at quarterback, is he taking off and having a big year under Bobby Petrino's offense? Who knows? We'll see. Is Sam Pitt Pittman still around? You know, he was on the hot seat this past offseason. If they don't get off to a good start, it could be that Bobby Petrino is the acting head coach at Arkansas at this point in time of the year. So who even knows? They should win the game. But going to Arkansas, you remember the last time they did it, Texas went in there. And that stadium uh, was absolutely rocking there over there in Fayetteville. So um, a tough environment. SEC road games are not easy to win unless you're playing Vanderbilt. But Arkansas, it's always uh, it's a rivalry game. It's a it's a tough game. I would give it a difficulty of about a six point five. Uh, you know, just because of the environment and being on the road and having to uh, face, even though Florida's not very good and, and Texas will beat Florida handily, I would say by two touchdowns or more in the previous week, still there there could be that residual effect of, are there any nagging injuries, things like that, you always got to keep in mind. So uh, keep that in mind when you're seeing Texas play Arkansas in game 10 away November 16th. November 23rd, you get the Kentucky Wildcats at home again. The Wildcats are a wild card. We don't know what's going on with their offense. Liam Cohen, we believe, is headed to Tampa Bay to be the offensive coordinator for the Buccaneers. Uh, Brock Vandergriff comes over from Georgia to be their quarterback, but he's inexperienced. Five-star talent out of high school, just never got to play behind Stetson Bennett and Carson Beck, so he ends up going to Kentucky. We'll see what that looks like for them. We, you kind of know what you're going to get in Mark Stoops and Brad White at defensive-wise. Um, you know, Sarkeesian and, and company will, will be – 
familiar with them from their their past in the SEC, things of that nature, and seeing them on on film. But you know, I think this is just another big break to have this a, a game where it's at Austin, Texas, and not in Lacing. Lexington, Kentucky. So uh, I would give a difficulty rating similar to what I did of uh, Arkansas six, six and a half. Nothing, nothing crazy there should take care of business if you're Texas. Then Texas A&M, much like I think uh, this is this is going to be ended up being very similar to Alabama, Auburn, the Iron Bowl. I think it's going to be a game that regardless of the records, particularly now with Mike Elko at the helm and him making the claim that, hey, Texas A&M is the preeminent school in the state of Texas, things of that nature, and 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 the the rivalry back and forth between Texas fans and A&M fans. It's going to be fascinating to see how this dynamic plays out. Now, when it comes down to it, Texas fans will always call A&M little brother and things of that nature, and and you know rightfully so at this point with their histories and things of that nature. But A&M has been in the SEC longer. OK, uh, they, they they have been there and kind of know the lay of the land right at this point in the year. You always see Texas A&M or at least you did under Jimbo Fisher, them kind of rise up and, and, and beat a team they weren't supposed to um, there. You look at LSU a couple of years ago, right before the SEC championship game. So Mike Elko, uh, you know, how well can he establish his culture and build up that program? Did a great job at Duke. We'll see what he does at Texas A&M. But this is a difficulty rating when you got to go to Kyle Field, 12th man, that cult over there that they have uh, with the Aggies and the weird Rebel yell and all that kind of stuff. I just think it makes it a difficulty rating of about an eight, okay, that just because you're on the road and it's a rivalry game and all that kind of stuff late in the year. Texas may be in a position where if they only have one loss, they're looking forward to – if they only have one loss or no losses – Texas is going to be looking forward to the SEC championship game. Can you afford any, you know, look ahead, things like that. So uh, have some maturity and be able to handle that there. That'll be big for Texas. But, yeah, an interesting rivalry game there with Texas A&M. Guys, yeah, this is a, a 100% manageable and really one of the easier schedules comparatively in the SEC this year. Steve Sarkeesian said that he got a taste of what that championship could be like. He got close there with the, the, the CFP berth last year. He's obsessed with it, wants to win a championship for Texas, wants to win two, two, three, four, just keep going winning championships for Texas. Well, you got to get that first one, and welcome to the SEC. It's going to be, regardless of you being more talented and a better team than most of these that you play, arguably every one except Georgia, it's still the SEC and week in and week out. You've got to you got to bring the bring the lunch pail, uh, bring the hard hat, and, and just put in the work. And we'll see if Texas is able to do that. A lot of this comes into luck. Okay, you got to have some injury luck. You can't can't afford key injuries different places. We got to see that defensive line developed with Devondre Sweat, Byron Murphy gone, Bo Davis having uh, left and going to LSU as the defensive line coach. So. Some things you got to work out over there, but otherwise, Texas is loaded. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to SEC Unfiltered, the best SEC entity on the internet. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications here on YouTube. Also, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, X, TikTok, all of it there. Um, we appreciate you tuning in, and then you see the website, secunfiltered.com. Lots of great content going out over there on the written side of things as well. For everyone at SEC Unfiltered, I'm Blaine Gilmer. God bless you, and we will catch you next time and we'll talk more Texas football and more SEC football right here on SEC Unfiltered. Uh -huh.